Healthcare reform front and centre both here at home and in the United States in the last few months. We've also seen the rollout of e-health pilots both here and overseas. To take a look at the next phase though for telemedicine, Helen Frost speaking with Bill Kronz, Senior Director for Microsoft Health and started by asking him to compare the current reform plans for the US and the Australian industries. In America, we've just gone through a big health reform movement. Uh, here I come to Australia, and it's in all the headlines, health reform, health reform. What's interesting is in both instances, there have been kind of these parallel tracks. And although we're talking about health reform, in the U.S., it was really health insurance reform, getting people who are uninsured into the system, in other words, how we pay for health care. And again, what I see here in Australia is we're calling it health reform, but it's really health payment reform. So uh, I would say that if we're going to reform health care, it's really about transformational processes that change fundamentally the way we deliver health care and deliver health care across the whole continuum of care from hospitals and clinics to community centers and into the home. That will transform health care. President Obama did promise a lot of funding for IT within the health services industry. So how are we seeing that move forward? What's really interesting, in 2004, when George Bush was still president in the U.S., he proclaimed that we would have an electronic record for all Americans within seven years. But what he didn't say was the government was going to pay for it. When Obama was elected and we started talking about health care reform, the administration made a real commitment that IT was a very important part of that, and electronic records was something that America had to have. And in fact, people might be surprised that if you look at the industrialized world, America is kind of a laggard in healthcare IT. Uh, probably 70% of our practice is still done on pen and paper today, and particularly in ambulatory care and GP offices, it's almost all on paper. So uh, people are surprised by that. So the American government felt they had to do something. So a big part of the stimulus push, the total stimulus package to recover the economy in the U.S., about $20 billion was set aside just for IT. And they've designed around that some criteria around certification and meaningful use so that they're not just going to hand the money out, but in fact that cl uh, clinicians will be incented to get electronic records and to use them in meaningful ways. So how does that then compare to back here in Australia? It's interesting to note that actually you've been ahead of the U.S. in terms of at least GP practices being electronic. However, uh, one of the things that I'm always telling my colleagues, so many people talk about IT and the electronic medical record. And they say, well, when we get the electronic medical record, we're done. That's the end of the story. We're done. We're now electronic. We have best practice in IT. And in fact, that's not the case. When you get the electronic record, when you digitize health information, the journey is just beginning. Now you can actually get at the information, you can do things with the information, you can analyze it, you can institute best practices, you can look at quality, you can look at safety, and all the issues that we just can't get our arms around until we have that electronic data. So the EMR is not the end of the journey, it's the beginning of the journey. And what about insurance companies? Are you seeing any of them getting involved? Today, every citizen in the state of Hawaii, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, can go online and talk to their doctor or a doctor, and the insurance company that they're insured with actually will pay for that visit minus a small deductible. When you see insurance companies or you see governments stepping up around e-health services, they're doing it for one reason only. I mean, first of all, it's much more satisfying to the, the providers often and particularly to the patients, but it does save money and it improves the quality of care. Can you give us an example of some of these pilots? Remarkably, when I've come to Australia on prior visits, um, I know uh, Professor Celebranco was somebody that I've met with many times, and um, we've mentioned uh, and, and looked at, for example, Intel, Intel solution that brings kind of teleconferencing and monitoring into the home. When you look at these kinds of things, historically, I've seen some real brilliance coming out of Australia because, again, of the rural health and the needs to the Aboriginal populations and so forth. There's been some really good pilot work here, but what's been missing, again, is that that business imperative of government or the payers of care kind of stepping up and saying, you know what, we can't keep doing things the same old way and expect a different outcome. We really need to transform the way we deliver care. So we do that by liberating health care data, by giving people very powerful tools that can connect care throughout the ecosystem, and by basically uh, giving tools to individuals that sort of empower them to use and consume that information. So what do we need to see happen now? 
The opportunity is to, as I say, really look at what it's going to take to transform health care. One of the things that I'd like to see in some of the work we're doing around the world is, is putting the consumer at the center, putting the patient at the center. And we have technology called Health Vault in America right now that we're we, and in Canada and it's starting up in Germany. It's a solution that basically allows people to create a place in the cloud on the internet, a place to store their personal health record. They can enter data into this. Their provider can enter data into this. What we're doing is creating a system that, that aggregates your, a summary of your health record around you. And as you move through the ecosystem of care, be it a doctor's office or hospital or imaging center or wherever, that data moves with you. That's opposed to an older model that says, well, the way we do that is we just simply interconnect everything. Um, so every doctor's office, every hospital, every clinic, we hardwire them up. That's a very expensive and very inflexible way to do it. We're seeing a lot of pilots being rolled out. How long till we see those pilots actually move into the mainstream health industry? When I visit um, countries where healthcare is largely a federally funded or public entity, I think, well, gosh, you've got the payer of health, they should be aligned with the hospitals and clinics and so forth. So you should have this sort of like perfect little storm where e-health makes a lot of sense. For some reason we're just not quite there yet, but it is coming.